What's going on guys? In this video we are going to see how to parameterize a curve with respect to arc length. Now here we have arc length function is given by this and let's draw a sample diagram. Let's say this is our C component, this is Y component and Z component and the curve is going to look like this. Right? And this is going to be our arc, I mean this is going to be our helix and let's see how we can parameterize this one respect to arc length and if you remember that uh, arc length formula for a vector function is given by this like first of all we have function and uh, we find the derivative of that function and then square root it and then we find the integration of that with the low, upper limit and lower limit let's go ahead and do that let's uh, here we have the equation the first step is we have to find the derivative Let's go ahead and do the derivative. So r vector r prime is going to be first we have cos t and the derivative of cos t is going to be minus sin t sin t in the i direction and uh, derivative of sin t is going to be cos t in the j direction and then derivative of t k that's going to be just k 1k so we can put k right here. Now we have found out the derivative. Now let's deal with the square root part for now. Then we can do the integration later. Now the square root part is going to be r prime of t magnitude is going to be square root of minus sine t square plus cos t square plus one square. And the first step is we have to look at, look for trigonometric identities when we have these kind of problems. So here we have sine square t plus cos square t plus one, one square is going to be one. And you know that uh, sine square plus sine square t plus cos square t that's going to be equal to one. So we can put just one plus one right here and this is going to be equal to root two. And now we have found out this this one this part the square root part. Now we have to integrate this one in order to find the arc length. So let's call arc length this s. S is going to be square root of 2 and integral lower limit is going to be 0. Let's call the upper limit is t and uh, we have to if this is t we have to integrate with respect to something else. So du let's put du and then here if we integrate this one that's going to be just root 2 t actually u u and then okay so first of all you have to know how did I get c0 low limit and if you notice the given information the length is measured from 1 0 0 in the direction of increasing t so here the initially we had this one and from this one if you compare with the original function right here cos t i sin t j and t k and this tk 1 0 0 so this is 1 this is 0 this is 0 right that's what this is telling and from this one you can see the last one is 0 therefore this 0 must be a 0 I mean this t must be a 0 so that's how I got the lower limits of integration and the upper limits of integration that's what we are going to find respect to s now this is uh, now we integrated this one that's going to be root 2 u then we have 0 to t now let's simplify this is going to be root 2 t minus root 2 times 0 that's going to be just 0 we can just give it like this and the final answer is going to be root 2 t now the question is reparameterize this helix so what we have to do is we have to find the t respect to this arc length I mean in terms of arc length so this is going to be we know that root 2 t is going to be equal to s right therefore t is going to be equal to s over root 2 now to reparameterize what we do is we write the same equation r vector t is equal to cos t and instead of t we just replace every t with s over root 2 so this is going to be cos s over root 2 in the i direction plus sine 
s over root 2 in the j direction plus s over root 2 in the k direction and that's gonna be the final answer i hope you guys find this video helpful see you next time